In this video, we will be addressing friction and bounciness on materials using, uh, using end cloth. So in this scene, I have a plane that's up here with a lot of subdivisions and a, what I would call a tabletop, but in this case, it's basically just a cylinder. Now, let me increase the amount of subdivisions on this. I just noticed that it was fairly low. Let's make that about, I don't know, let's say um, 80 by 80 or something like that. So that works. And I have more subdivisions and I'm making it smoother when it animates. So what I want to do is I want to make that an end cloth. So I'll go ahead and set that to end cloth. So that will be my end cloth. And this will be the passive collider. So let's go ahead and make that the passive collider. Now, when I hit play on this, what's going to happen is my cloth is going to drop and it's going to deform as soon as it touches that tabletop and it's going to wrap around it. Now, you notice that this is taking a little bit longer. And the reason for that is because, as I explained in another video, Basically, I am trying to force this to play back at 24 FPS and the program might not have enough RAM and enough CPU power to calculate all the deformations that are happening on the cloth. So the more subdivisions I have, the slower this is going to be on rendering. So I want to change my settings from 24 FPS on playback to play every frame. That way I can give time for Maya to calculate each frame's geometry. When I do that, it's going to take its time, but it's going to render each frame and it's going to contain everything that I expect it to contain within the timeline. Now, as I said before, I can create an end cache for this if I wanted to save that onto cache and play it back at real speed, but we're, we are not doing that in this case. What I want to do in this case is I want to check the bounciness of my cloth. So to do so, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select that uh, object, go to its notes in the attributes editor and look for the um, for the cloth shape node. In here, I have the ability to change the bounciness of the material. So by default, it is set to zero. If I set this to one, I shouldn't see much change on the actual animation when it hits the table. You see a little bit of change, but not significant. Now, at around 1.5, two or three, you see the little floppiness that happens, that's from the bounciness. And that's sort of what we would expect clothing, clothing to actually react, cloth to react like when it hits an object. So it's almost like a puff of air has been contained inside it, as you can see. And that's just basically the clothing, clothing, the cloth bouncing off the table. So let's go ahead and increase that ever so slightly to like 1.15, hit enter. And slight changes on this, it's all that is needed after a value of one. If you increase that value to like five, your machine might stop working and your scene might crash. So make sure that you don't go very high on this. I usually don't go past 1.25 if I'm adding any bounciness into my scenes because it does make the, uh, the, the geometry react in a weird way. It will get to a point where this hits the table and it'll just bounce back as if it was made of rubber. So let's say if I go 1.4, You'll notice what, I, what it does in just a second. Watch. Once it hits, it's probably going to bounce back a lot. And that might not be necessarily what I want. That still looks a little bit natural, so that's still good. So a value like that can help, and that is how you create bounciness on the actual geometry. So now to talk about friction, let's go ahead and um, switch my layer off, select this layer. And what I want to do is I want to delete all of those solvers that I have created for the other stuff, including the nucleus. And I want to make this plane into a cloth. Let's go ahead and increase the values on this as well. Let's go ahead and make that about 80 by 80 as well. And let's uh, make it an end cloth. And this cube right here, I want to make it, there seems to be, there's a solver in here. And I don't know what that's over is for, so let me delete it. I don't need it. Let me delete everything there. Let's make that a cloth. And now that I know that the nucleus belongs to that particular solver. And let's select this and make that the passive collider. So I'm going to go ahead and go in cloth, passive collider. And once I play this back, what's going to happen is the cloth is going to hit the table. Let me actually turn off my grid so we can see what's happening. So it hits the table and starts sliding on it, as I expect clothing to react. Now, what if I wanted that to have a little bit more friction? Let's say this is not a smooth surface. It's kind of a little bit rough. So in order to add that friction, that roughness to that surface, I need to select it and go to its 
end node to its uh, rigid shape node. And over here under bounce, you'll see friction. So if I increase friction, let's say to a value of one over here, let's play this back and see what happens. You see that my clothing gets crunched up and it's not sliding as much as it was before. And that's exactly what I would want my friction to do to that cloth. Now, the amount of subdivisions that I had created gave me a good fold on the clothing itself. That's why I increased my subdivisions to about 80. But obviously, this the, the, the end result of this is that it's slowing down overall because it has to calculate quite a lot of deformation on my cloth. But that is how you would affect bouncing uh, values for your materials and friction inside end cloth.